Welcome to the continued podcast adventures of three opinionated guys with mics and too much free time. Strong enough to stop a speeding movie rumor. More powerful than a bad comic book event. Able to waste hours of time asking stupid questions to people who have better things to do. It's Dave, Ben, and John. It's Superhero Speak. Hey everyone, you're listening to Superhero Speak, and I'm your host Dave. And John. And Brad. And... Yay! <laughs> hey! I am here today with without, uh, hopefully with minimum technical difficulties. <laughs> we thought we'd bring out the big guns today. Yes, yes. The big guns, to talk about the little guns. Yes. Really, who else is here? <laughs> uh, so, everyone knows that uh, Ant-Man came out this weekend, and... Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about it. We all have seen it at this point. We're gonna we're gonna review the movie. So as always, those who are familiar with this show, you know at this you should know by now that this is going to be spoiler heavy. So if you haven't seen the movie yet and you don't want to be spoiled, wait to listen to this episode till after you see the movie. Um, for those who don't care or have seen it, here we go. So I'm gonna give the best spoiler of the show, and we're gonna call it a wrap, guys. It sucked. No. No, 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 no. no. All right. Peace <laughs> out. We're done. That's it. <laughs> no. Actually, it's a great film for anybody listening. Um, yeah, it's going to be a fun show. So uh, keep your ears open and pick up on a lot of the cool stuff that's going to happen in it. If uh, you haven't seen it yet, uh, you may want to turn this off for sure. So, uh, yeah. So Ant-Man uh, starring Paul Rudd as Scott Lang and uh, Michael Douglas as Hank Pym. Um and uh, so, so yeah, okay, so Brad, you said already said you loved it. John, what did you think? Yeah. I think the best part of it was when he took on the entire team of the Avengers and beat them all one by one and <laughs> and then <laughs> and then and then destroyed Galactus, but then, of course, got <clears throat> beaten finally by Squirrel Girl, so you know <laughs> Maggie's not here, so we can't bring Damn Squirrel. It. Uh, no, um I, seriously, um, seriously, I liked it i i I went in I, I tell you. After what they did with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, you go in thinking, yes, there is no, this is going to be just as good. It's it's a can't lose situation, but it's not the same movie, you know, and it's it's not the same type of movie. And for the type of movie that Ant-Man is, it is excellent. I And and you've got all the tie-ins that you, you could have wanted in a Marvel movie. You get to see, okay, can we, we can do the spoilers now, right? Yes, um, yes. You get you get a mention of the wall crawler. You get yes. uh, you get you get Ant Man taken on and completely embarrassing uh, Falcon. I guess because Falcon didn't get enough screen time in the Avengers too. So, <laughs> so you know they get here. Here we'll give you thanks. What do I do? You get kicked ass. You get your ass kicked by this little guy over here. What? 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 Ah! So you know it's just it, it was it was great. I I I really liked it, and it's it's a good heist movie like you had been talking about before. All right. Uh, yeah, I love that you mentioned that too. Like they didn't waste too much time. Like okay, yes, they didn't mention <laughs> Spidey in the Avengers two, but. I have a feeling that was pretty much a lock before the deal was final, but at least they mentioned him in this movie. So it's like, but not by name. No, they they just said a guy who crawls on walls and, and swings on ropes or something like that. And it was like, okay, okay, that's mm-hmm. good. It's good. It's a start. Yeah, they were very they were very confident in terms of finalizing the Sony deal when they made this, and they took liberties either way because they said if you don't come to the table with your version, we're going to use the Amazing Spider Man and throw out you know. Um, the new kid Peter Parker version, and we're going to see what's going to happen with that. And Sony said, "No, no, we want a foothold. Let's go." Yeah. So, hey, j- uh, j- and just for a minute, you thought a guy who crawls on walls. Oh no, they don't mean Toad, do they? Did they finally get the? Did they, <laughs> did they get the X Men back? No. You you saw that ad, didn't you, John? <laughs> you saw those promotions around social media lately about the Fox uh, deal with Disney trying to get back in to cross over the X Men. Have you seen that mess? I uh, know, but uh, well, not to, I, well, not to get I off topic it. of Ant Man, but but well, yeah, ahead. they they've been working on it real 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 hard lately because uh, they've been you know Disney Marvels as I like to call them now the Disney Marvel project goes off and and says okay we're working with Fox to try to get the FF straightened out after this fiasco and the the new X Men franchise to get the new X Men in to bring them up to the new cartoon speed that they're doing in Disney on um, the DX right. channel things like that. And then you've got the right field, which is Sony, which Sony said, 
yeah, we haven't made a Spidey movie in a while. No problem. We're not going to fight with you on this. You're making box office smashes. We want to make money too. <laughs> we don't want to get taken over in a hostile takeover because Warner Brothers is after us right now. So, <laughs> you know, um, they've made three, so, so far Warner Brothers has made three attempts in the last two years to take over Sony. And, um, uh. It's yeah. Can you imagine Warner Brothers getting the rights to Spider Man? No, I can't. And that would that would just nightmare. be horrible. Well, um, you know, back to back to the Ant Man thing. They made mention to uh, they made a Wolverine reference in um, in there as well because they were talking about Scott Lang when he was in prison. How he they mentioned in the background, you know, when he's taking that shot right in the beginning, trading punches with his buddy uh, to give him his farewell he makes a mention. He said, you almost hit as hard as the blob. Oh, right. Right. That's uh-huh. true. So they were making the Wolverine blob reference from the weapon X characters where they would cross over um, yes. those characters. So, you know, because Disney has been screaming, you know, if Fox doesn't come to the table and play games, uh, they're going to make their own version of the X-Men anyway, just like they did. Cause uncanny is on the table. Right, so they're, right. they're just taunting them. That's awesome. I, I, <laughs> I hate to say it. I mean, it's, it's they've got all the leverage though, man. They've got all the levers. They've got all the money. I mean, if you saw the last X-Men movie, the age of apocalypse, uh, trailers are coming out and everything looks like it's, um, almost like I'm with everybody that's bashing it because it's facts it, that it looks like the, uh, super, the uh, mighty Morphin power ranger superhero stuff. It doesn't <laughs> look like an X-Men movie anymore because they've gotten so quali- so uh highly in depth with the characters and they're expanding it. Right. But um you know Ant-Man was great. They they used top-notch graphics. It it looked way better on film than it came out in the couple of snippets that we were worried about um the right. infamous bathtub scene Dave. Yes. <laughs> that 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 was beautifully done as far as I was concerned. Right. Yeah, and, right. and I and I was worried when they yeah, you know, that first scene when he shrinks and you and you're watching that, you're thinking, Oh my god, this is gonna be honey, I shrunk the kids. It's gonna be horrible. <laughs> but but the way they did the transitions between him going small and knocking somebody out because his you know, his mass is still the same technically, and then growing big again and all that, they did they you're right, they did an awesome job. Right. I was just really impressed. Right. I, let's, yeah, go ahead, Dave. That's Sorry. one of the things I, I loved about the movie is they explain that without getting overly technical and, 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 uh, and sciencey about it. But right, he's <clears throat> shrinking, but it's still the same amount of atoms. So he's still right. the same mass. He's just tiny. So if he hits, it's, you know, 200 pounds of force behind <laughs> it, not, you know, a little ant hitting you. Right. And you I like the way that they used, uh, Michael Douglas's Hank Pym as the physical example of that. Uh, they, they did the flashback from his old records to show the force behind it. Right. Um, and the overall, uh, the overall footage, the way it was directed, I loved it because you're, you're spot on about that, John, the way, the way they showed him doing, they showed the impact of the action on the character fighting, you know, fighting air instead of showing the little mini, mini me hitting him and knocking him across the room and looking cheesy. Right. Yeah. But but that brings us to our first problem with the movie, which is, okay, you shrink, you have the same mass, and you can hit like a bullet. But that means, by by extension, if you grow something bigger, it's still going to have the same mass. And so the Tommy that the, you know, the, um, was it the engine that could or whatever, the, when the... that thing grew up. Thomas the Tank Engine. Th- Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah, when that thing grew up, it should not have crushed a car. It should have bounced off the car like a like a big foam boulder. And I know, and, I know, but it it wouldn't have been funny the other way around. But actually, and actually, that is a reverse physics. We're not going to get too sciencey with it, but I I actually study com- uh, quantum physics a little bit as a hobby, and I know no, I'm not any way qualified to justify all of that scientifically. But um, what I do understand is is when you when you expand the mass that way, it does gain weight by volume, so it would have enough to crush the car physically right. because the the cells would expand to have physical mass. Well, so, I studied comic physics, and I say it's bullcrap. <laughs> Well, well you, know, you know what? We're talking know, about a movie okay. where a but guy can shrink to the size of ants and control ants. So let's not, you know. But if you want to get into the science fiction side of it, you know, Stan Lee mm-hmm. made made uh, the Hulk grow to an ultimate size, but the dude still has his pants on. Right. <laughs> I mean, um, I don't know a fabric, especially well, corduroy. Spanx. You know, especially. But we're talking the 1970s. We're talking corduroy, man. That stuff doesn't give. Right. Um, well, it was a precursor to Spanx. I don't know. It's just... Anyway, uh, 
So it's a little bit about the movie. Uh, everyone knows, right, they went with Scott Lang uh, as uh, Ant-Man um, and Hank Pym as kind of the mentor. The main and, universe, Scott Lang, thank goodness. Right, right. But which, which it's interesting because, um, you know, on this podcast and a lot of people on social media and stuff, when they said they were going with Scott Lang, it's like, why are they skipping over Hank Pym? Like, <clears throat> you know, and, and people got the impression that, he was just a scientist who created the Ant-Man suit and was sitting on it and didn't use it. I was thankful when we we're watching the movie. It's like, no, he was Ant-Man. Oh, you know? man, they were so wrong with that. <laughs> I called it from the beginning. I knew they were going to do that. But, uh, yeah, it, it, I, I love the way they did the intro with him. And, I mean, the first scene out of the gate where he, he just busted the guy's face, I, I just loved that. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just, do you think, yes. Do you yes, think that did... was, okay, there, there, now there's, okay. That actually right away brings me to a very interesting point. Right. So it's 1989 um, and Hank Pym goes into a, it's the CIA building or something. Well, um, no, that was that was no, stars. It was Stark yeah, Industries. Yeah. And that, that was they were building the facility for for shield in there. Yeah. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. All that right, was, so he goes that was the building that the Triskelions like destroyed when they. OK, right. so, so right. he goes to shield. I'm sorry. I didn't pay that close attention in the beginning. Yeah. <gasps> uh, um, and you see Michael Douglas as he looked in 1989, not Michael Douglas today, which is... Yeah, romance, it was Romancing the Stone. They took his face from that movie. I mean, it was such amazing CGI. Like, you couldn't even tell. Um, but, so, the, one of the guys he's meeting with um, says, makes a comment about his wife that pisses him off. And he slams the guy's head into the desk to the point where his nose is now bleeding all over the place. And... It's like it's one of the things that we talked about um, before when when this movie was coming up. Do you think they'll explore the darker side of Hank Pym? And ding ding we, ding. Yeah. And 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 there was there was some we you know there uh, the co-hosts who, who remain nameless um, kind of said, well, it's Disney. I can't see Disney doing that. Um, but no, they you know they did it without doing it. You know, well, well, right. it's it's Marvel. They. They they are holding so tight to their canon that they didn't want to deal with showing on screen Hank Pym beating his wife. And so they time shifted it so you didn't get to see those parts. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And, and then on top of that, you got um, all of the impressionism throughout all of the movies now. They're getting, you know, like they did with Guardians of the Galaxy where, um, you know, they see – you, you see Peter with the alien chick come up. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot you were here. You know, and she's running around in a T-shirt. You know what they were doing. And, well, you know. Well, he made, do... the, he made that comment about, you know, well, if you lit this up with with, um, with some ultraviolet light, it looked like a Jason Pollock film. Or... Yeah, yeah. They, they are not <laughs> avoiding it. They are not yeah. avoiding it. They know who their audience is for these movies. And they are nailing it time and time and time again. So, right. you know. Um, this is no different. Uh, we had a blast with it. Uh, everybody. And, and the funny thing is there was a man that was an ordained priest. He'd just been ordained three weeks prior at the movie, two seats down from us. And he was just busting up laughing the whole time. Cause he's a movie buff before he got ordained. Right. And he said, he told his, uh, his father, his mentoring minister, um, told, he told him flat out. He said, I'm not giving up movies. He said, God's first, but he said the theater's second. <laughs> it was just every crack he was just right there with us the whole time just screaming nice. laughing at this stuff um, so you know if, if it's accepted by a, a, a new priest of all people uh, come on guys you know the, it, the impressionism disney and marvel are handling it very very well right right the and theater uh, i was in it was cracking up pretty good too i mean there weren't a whole lot of people in but i went to a very early showing on a saturday morning so but they were they, the audience reaction was was good. I mean, I was laughing. Yeah, no, definitely. And and speaking of the comedy aspect of this, you know, which like again, that was an, another thing. You know, they said uh, um, Paul Rudd was going to be playing Ant Man, and I'm like, I guess so. I guess that you know, <laughs> you didn't know how far they were going to go with the comedy, and it's it's. Oh uh, yeah, a lot of people thought it was going to be like a Jack Black type of um, Green Lantern when he was trying to do right, that right, film as a right. parody type thing. Well, that would have been better than the original Green Lantern one, so, you know. Um, but, I mean, it all goes back to the original <laughs> script, uh, which was written by Edgar Wright. And, um, you know, it's it's obviously old news at this point, but we all know that 
Edgar Wright wrote a script way back in, I think, 2006, something like that, and was trying to get it made, and Marvel at, the, at first was like, uh, we're not going to do an Ant-Man movie, and then after a while when they decided, oh, we are going to do an Ant-Man movie, they went back right. to Edgar Wright and said, let's take a look at your script. And they said they liked it, and they, they bought it, and um, the only issue was... Now this is what's coming out now and how true this is. Like we all, the, 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 when it happened, it was creative differences and that's why they split ways. Uh, but they were still making an Ant-Man movie. Um, from what I've recently heard, this was on Hollywood Babylon. Um, the, the creative differences was Marvel said, this is a great script, but we need you to make these few minor changes to help tie it in with the overall Marvel universe. And Edgar Wright said, no, it's a standalone movie. And they said, no, we don't do standalone movies. You know, it's all part of the universe, and that's what the creative difference was. You've been uh, Disneyized. Ding! Yeah. <laughs> well, the same, Which, they did the same thing with Joss Whedon, right? Right. That's why Whedon now is walking away from doing the, the Avengers movies, because he's like, I don't want to, I want to try to write good standalone movies, and you're making me tie them in. And it's like, well, that's the point. It's Which is a blessing in disguise. Uh, disguise. Thank you guys to the mouse for that one because we get firefly returning at some sort i'm hearing rumors all <laughs> over the place and i have confirmed some things i can't say the source of where these things came from right now but i have very confirmed solid sources that there is a new firefly series coming out with a new timeline to uh counter serenity's death of the entire cast so uh <laughs> yeah hang tight for that one Oh, All right, man. Now I'm gonna have to stop drinking so my liver lasts long enough for me to see that. <laughs> wow, um, Dave, we've given something for John to live for. Yes, oh. um, he can put away the derpy collection now. Hey, he doesn't hey. have the blankie holding on to it anymore. Hey, you leave derpy out of this, okay, man? But uh, but my whole point for <laughs> for, for bringing that up. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I crossed the line. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. But anyway, my, my whole point for bringing up the, the Edgar Wright thing is, um, well, first off, you know, if if you want to play in the big sandbox, you got to play by the rules. You know, um, you do. But, Someone should tell Marvel that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. they are the sandbox. You got to play by their rules. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a hard one, though. I mean, on the one hand, these are these are directors that are amazing at what they do and they really if yeah if you gave them free reign they're going to give us quality fun great entertaining movies and yet at the same time you want those tie-ins because this whole greater universe thing is like it's 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 why we're all going to all of these movies right right well, you know, but there's another way to look at it too. It's not, this isn't new in the sense of, uh, how they write because look at the comic books. Um, oh, I think, yeah. I think a great example is the movie coming out next year, Civil War, is based on, uh, Mark Miller's, uh, seven part miniseries. Uh, Civil War was written, uh, was, I guess, 10 years ago at this point. And, um, if anyone What's that who's saying? I can't hear you. What? <laughs> for, for, uh... that's, the reason, that's the reason I said it that way. John, did you okay. hear Dave? What? <laughs> no, so, I, I, I said, speak up, Sonny. I can't hear you. Oh, okay. So oh, anyone who... That 10-year-old, 10-year ten year reference. Uh, <laughs> I got it. Anyone who's read the read that series knows that uh, it climaxes into a big battle in the middle of New York uh, with... Captain America on one side, Tony Stark on the other side, and the book ends with Captain America just giving up because he looks around at all the destruction, he feels bad about what's going on, and you know that's he he's like, oh, I, I can't believe I've done this to my city and my country, blah blah, blah and he gives up to Tony. But it was Spider Man quitting all over again with the Captain America shield in the trash can as the lid. <laughs> but when I when I when I met Mark Miller and I said. You know, I love Civil War, but I need to ask you something. Is that how you originally intended it to end? And he's like, well, no. He His original uh, intention to end it, and who knows how they're going to do it in the movie, uh, was to kill Captain America there. Um, but they had already wanted the story for, uh, I can't remember what issue it was, but they killed Captain America later on in the comics. So it was like... You know, he he wrote this great story, and it would have ended so much better if they killed Captain America in that book. It would have changed uh, the direction of how things went in the Marvel Universe after that, though. Yeah. So, again, 
he wanted the job. He loved the characters. He wanted. He had the story he wanted to do. He had to do what Mil- uh, uh, Marvel told him to do. You know, so it's just Edgar. You know, you you Shaun of the Dead and and, <clears throat> and, and and Hot Fuzz. They're great movies, but you know, next time just listen to what they say. Yeah, read read, read the uh, read the sheaf of papers that they gave you to sign. Yeah, that's fine. Sure, in there. Um, but nobody yes. reads that stuff, man. It's Marvel. We have to trust them. <laughs> but uh, you can definitely tell uh, beside are, the line that it's a contract. Yeah. There, there are definite elements in this movie though they kept from him. You know, I yep. kind of feel that whole Thomas the Tank uh, engine scene was him. You know, that was something he oh read. through and through, no doubt. Yeah, that was that was great. Um, I mean, everyone's it, seen in the previews at this point too. You know, well, but, get, moving it along, man. Tell me this: what did you guys think about Yellow Jacket? Um, you know, it's my, my issue, is, my issue with Yellow Jacket is, is 181. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my, I, I like, I mean, you know, I can't think of the actor's name. Um, uh, hold on. Um, Evangeline Lilly. No, Corey Stoll. Oh. Um, he is played, so checking his Google reference right now. <laughs> yes. That, that plays Darren Cross, Yellow Jacket in the movie. And the problem with, the problem with, Yellow Jacket and how he's portrayed in this movie is he's no different than Jebediah's, uh, uh, I can't think of the character's last name, from the first Iron Man movie. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. And, and, you know, of course, this was a slight reverse. It was Hank Pym's um, uh, uh, person he brought into the to be his mentor to take over his business. Right. It was his original pro- protege that was supposed yeah, to take protege, over. Yeah, protege. That's the word. Right. Um, he wouldn't share the formula with him, so he went crazy trying to figure the formula out on his own, and uh, and became very. It became your typical Looney Tune villain, like, which was funny because in the comic books, the original storyline was that Henry Pym brought him in, or Hank Pym, either way you call it, uh, wanted to bring him in, and he went nuts and used the formula for tomfoolery to steal other people's technology. Right. Right, but yeah, they they gave him the the one and done treatment in this movie, and it's like, yeah, they could have done more with him, but you know, he 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 shrunk into nothingness. Yeah, well, I I hated the fact that the I hated the armor, I, I really hated that suit. Um, they reminded me of those big yellow and black garden spiders that people get, you know, <laughs> that, that or, just, or weavers. Yeah, yeah, it was just weird. Um, it now, was now, yeah yeah I. I before we go any further, don't get me wrong. I think Corey Stoll uh, did a great job with the role, with with what he was given. The character it's... was awesome. It's just I had a bug about the armor. Okay. <laughs> bug. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh. Excuse me. <laughs> I didn't do that on purpose. I apologize. <laughs> uh, anyway, moving on. Yeah. Um, I, it, it's just, you know, it was it wasn't creepy. It wasn't villainous. It was almost like an Iron Man knockoff. You know, you half expected it to shoot things, and it did. And it was – the character was phenomenal. I loved the way they play, portrayed the character. Um, thought the fight scenes were great. But the concept of the Yellow Jacket armor just – it was it was like filler, you right. know? They could have done so much more with that character, especially compared to what they did with the uh, Wasp and the Ant-Man flashbacks. They could have right, done right. so much more bringing that up to speed with just that armor alone. And right, making right. that a really nasty villain. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's your um uh your typical movie um trope where you know he's trying to figure out how to shrink organic material, and he figures it out right before their plan to go in and steal the 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 technology from him. You know, but now before zapping the competition and turning them to pink snot. That was well, awesome. yeah, that's true. That's true. Joe. Yeah, that um, was awesome and disgusting. Yes, yeah, but it was just like like you know really like we're gonna do that you know oh it's just all perfect timing lining up again uh, i don't know what did you think yellow jacket john you're being quiet uh no I, I there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot of backstory for it there was not a whole lot of support for it but you know you have so much more packed into the movie that yeah to, to explain that you would have added a lot more time to the movie just to just to bring that along with a, a good a good arc to explain Let's why the suit was so different from the other one and what problems he was having with with getting things you know shrinking and and why he he made the suit what you know why he made the suit you know stay small or what i just i don't know he's just it's uh 
Yeah, we it, know. We had an issue with shrinkage. Well, yeah, but the thing is, okay, if... They, the, 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 yeah, right. The, no the thing, comment. <laughs> the problem Last was, though, the, the problem with him going crazy, though, is that according to what they were saying was that the shrinking process, if you don't have protection for your brain, you're, it's, it's going to affect your brain patterns. Right. But they weren't able to shrink organic matter. So at what point did he not have, I mean, was he, was he, it didn't, it never showed him like testing things out in the suit. I guess they couldn't have shrunk him in even inside the suit because organic matter not working. So at what point he was already crazy. He was already pulling a, a Corgan, you know, the, well, that, the, that's what they said. The cellular, that's what they said. The, the uh, micronization process, uh, that was the problem. They said that it could, it changed you on a cellular level. And that's what uh, Hank Pym mentioned. You know, why, when Scott asked him, he said, why don't you wear the suit and do and take him out? And he said, I can't, it's done too many different things to me. Right. But, but the other it changed guy... him on a cellular level because it affected the, it, the suit injected them. Right, no, no. But what John's saying is, is he never shrunk himself. So why was he crazy? And that's true. They never really explained it. And just, that was the whole thing. Right. And the mm-hmm. other thing is, um, too, because when he said, when uh, when Cross says to him, um, "Why did you pick me to be your 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 protege?" He's like, "Because I saw a lot of myself in you." And then when he said, "Well, then why did you uh, abandon me?" And he's like, "Because I saw too much of myself in you," you know. Which again was hinting to the darker side of Hank Pym, but then they are kind of trying to say that it was the the Ant Man formula that made him dark, but then maybe it's not, you know. So it's you know well, it's it, a lot left up to interpretation, I think. It, it's your right. standard. It's your standard Kurgan. Uh, the, the the original uh, Highlander movie. It's just your 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 standard. Here we need a we need a antagonist. <clears throat> Here's a guy. He's crazy, and you know go. You know, but no, that's no the... real motivation <clears throat> per se. Just he's just batshit crazy, and he acts the way he acts. That's a technical possi- term, by the way. Hmm? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a technical term, by the way. <laughs> but, but but the way he acts, he couldn't possibly have gotten to where he is now. Right. So it's just like he, he, everything's starting right now. But that's the conflict, though, John. That's that's the whole thing. It's it was a one layered filler character instead of going deep with it. Um, you know, the actors were phenomenal, but the that was the oh, only yeah. qualm I had with the film was is because it was such a great character and they didn't do anything with it. Right. You know, uh, it was all about the Scott and the Hank and Scott storyline with them getting together, and you know, um, the mystery of Janet, what happened to her. And then you had Hope come in as the new position to figure out her role and her, where she was going to bounce off. And if, you know, Scott was going to get crushed by the Avengers eventually. And it was just the whole family dynamic to humanize him, which was a great aspect of the film, I thought. And, you know, um, with the daughter and the ex and the things going on there. But as far as the villain goes, they normally, with these films, they like to to set them up, and they did the same thing. Sorry if you haven't seen Age of Ultron, anybody listening, but the thing is, they did the same thing with Ultron, where they fell short in the last Avengers movie. They used them as a filler villain when he could have been so much more Yeah. in this movie, if they'd have added just an extra 10 or 15 minutes to explain and give him that depth story. Right, right. No, right. and that, right, because they gave Scott Lang a... a deep and interesting uh story they gave hank pym a deep and interesting story and they gave hope uh van dyke a deep and interesting story so it's like you even three... gave the goofy sidekicks you know <laughs> a backstory so right right so so right they have three main characters right and the sidekicks right even had more of a a, a, a backstory than oh, the, your villain the, the pet ant that he rode had a better backstory <laughs> <laughs> poor <laughs> ant me Oh, Anthony. In loving memory of Anthony. In loving memory of Anthony. To inform anybody, spoiler alert, there is a major character that dies in this movie. And yes. it is not just the villain. Yes, He's we're right. actually we're dedicating this episode to the memory of Anthony. Yes, <laughs> and, and, and now for his song. Didn't Ah wow. Um Yes, that was horrible. Yeah, so I mean and it's 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 funny though, um, 
it's the one criticism I do hear uh, quite often from for the Marvel movies is a lot of the villains, not all of the villains, because, you know, we have uh, Chris uh, Hemsworth, not Chris Hemsworth, um, Tom <laughs> Hiddleston as as Loki is, is oh. a great villain. Contract yeah. breach. <laughs> um, but, but, yeah. but a lot of the other villains are kind of like, eh, you know. And uh, and it just kind of he you know the yellow jacket fell into that bucket again you know exactly which is, and, and which of is course, why you know go ahead go ahead go ahead uh, which is why Loki should be the antagonist in every one of these movies oh bite your tongue man please <laughs> <laughs> okay what, what were you gonna say man well I was just gonna say you know uh, with these movies like they did in Ultron. Uh, you know, Age of Ultron, they they tried to have three or four different things come in, like with, uh, you know, uh, the Baron came back and then they had the cameo of the twins. And then they had uh, even Magneto mentioned as a crossover because uh, it was genetic material that they took from him in the 60s when they were trying uh, back when they did the uh, a, the Days of Future Past. They actually connected the new Avengers film to the Fox films and said that when um, Trask was trying to capture uh, mystique and all that mess they actually caught dna of different um different people and when the government caught that version of uh petro quicksilver they actually got a hold of magneto's dna as his father and they were trying to bleed in that little bit for the fox approach oh right right huh. so you know i i was like you know they're trying to bring in the magneto character for this and i hope it does cross over um into this realm but i don't know if i want to see the fox version of these things in you know get a disney foothold i, I don't know if that's just going to work i know sony's going to going to do it because marvel had a lot of leeway with the sony production um especially with sam raimi because he was on he was on board with them but my concern is if they cross it over and make it into a villain what is going to be the next marvel villain that comes out you know, that's my big question. They're hinting at three or four things in this. Yeah. What do you guys think with it? Hmm. I don't know because I mean, our, what? Sorry, I got all deep on you there. I know. Just, but think about it. What What would you guys see as the next villain, and what hints did you get out of Ant Man for that? Because I got two distinct ones, and I'll bring them up after you guys ponder it for a second. Well, yeah. You, okay. You after, well, you mean after after you know, big pink and mean, or you know, big what? pink and mean. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, um, not, oh, oh God, Ultron, I, I'm completely blanking now, Gauntlet, Infinity Gauntlet, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about more. Thanos, Starts Thanos. Thanos. Yeah, yeah, Thanos, Thanos, right, so right. what, uh, you're talking about after him, that there's something right. else after him, right, there, there, well, the, there's only one thing after him, I mean, once you beat him in the Infinity Gauntlet, there's only one other thing that's bigger than that, unless, Unless they go Loki, in which case it becomes re a really interesting conflict. Otherwise, it's just going to be a big power conflict, a Superman type thing, and it's Galactus. That's it. Really? Well, think think more think more local. <laughs> you think, of, think the on the Earth? Think on an Earth. Well, well, actually, Howard the Duck is going to be a, a huge antagonist in the. Uh, uh, the Marvel Universe, where everybody keeps saying that he's going to be a great independent film and a comedy. Um, yes, it's going to be a comedy, but they're actually pulling in more of the comic Howard the Duck, which they couldn't do in the 80s version. Yeah, so they're because... actually going to take it with a storyline, and um, he's going to be a gangbuster, pretty pretty close to Rocket type of mentality. <laughs> um, let's see. How about... I how about... This would, this, would, uh, this would definitely piss a lot of people off. The Beyonder. And uh, and uh, we do the secret wars. There you go. You, you hit think it right so? on. The, you hit it right on the head, man. Hmm. Well, we'll see. Um, the problem with it is is uh, the only problem with doing secret wars, and we're not talking the current secret wars going on in the comics. We're talking about the original secret wars. Is uh, they don't at the moment they don't have a lot of good main villains that are still alive. <laughs> <laughs> but the th but the thing is though that's the where, that's where they're going to come from is the crossover, and they're doing that because they've already mentioned the um, the um, Miguel twenty ninety nine um, Spider Man crossing over. They're talking about the other uh, Ultimate Spider Man crossing over into the movies as well. And you know, as the alternative for that, Disney's set, let out all these press rumors about them saying, well, after Secret Wars, we're going to see multiple Spider-Men, and it's going to change Peter Parker's world. Well, right. duh, it always does. But the thing is, you know, um, 
we're going to have a new Venom in, in the Disney Marvel franchise. They've already mentioned that coming up in the new Spider-Man movies um, after, after Civil War. So we're going to see some nasty, nasty stuff. The uh, Watchers are going to become an outside society, apparently, and come into play with them as well. Right, right. You know, it's funny. I didn't even think about it that way. But yes, and especially uh, because at the end of Secret Wars, they've already said there's going to be a whole slew of spider characters um, now uh, active in the uh, in the Marvel comic book universe. So that's something that I could definitely see Sony and Marvel both latching onto and saying, let's make this work in the movie somehow. You and know? you think about you think about this. You, you guys saw this the uh, secret trailers at the end, right? Yes. You saw both yep. of them, the Falcon and the Captain America one. Okay, well, the Falcon one, when he's on the bench, remember when he's talking about the wall, call, the wall crawler yep. <clears throat> that he's seeking out? He says there's two of them. No, I don't remember that. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember exactly. He tells, I, he tells the guy he's looking for two guys. He's seeking out two guys. Hmm. And it's implied that the first one's Ant-Man and he's looking for Spider-Man. You see the point there? Right. It, it it was left to believe that it's that it's both Ant Man and Spider Man. But the thing is, can you imagine if you know just playing on it here that if you misinterpret if we were left open to misinterpret that and it's the it's the two Spider Men he's hunting and he needs Ant Man to help hunt him down. That's that is what the critics are screaming right now. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's a little <laughs> far fetched, but you know it's open to interpretation. We're gonna have to wait to see what they do, of course. But um. Moving on with that, what do you guys think from the aspect of uh, the Captain America and Falcon trailer at the end with uh, Bucky being back? They're looking at getting Ant-Man uh, to go in and release him from the torture vice that he's clamped into and uh, fix his arm and all this mess. And they're talking about bringing in Stark to fix his arm. Right, right. And, 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 they, and they say, I don't think Stark will help. And they mentioned some kind of accords or something, obviously mm -hmm. set up for Civil War. And mm -hmm. then Falcon goes, I know a guy, you know, which obviously right. is. And, and and I was saying this to someone today. I love the fact that they did that because it's the first after credit scene that they've done that ties directly to the movie you just watched. It also gives an alter a great alternative to Tony Stark not being the only whiz kid in the park. Right, right. <laughs> well, they did, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, that's, I mean, that, that is all over Ant-Man. Um, you know, they mentioned Scott Lang has a, a master's in electrical engineering. Um, so it's not like he's just a thief, like, like, like they're saying he's a brain. Plus Hank Pym, you know, obviously is a genius because he invents these, uh, particles that allow you to shrink and grow, which we haven't grown yet, guys. But other it than that, Hank, beautiful uh, it takes a beautiful jab at Iron Man as well. Right. Um, and uh, and they show Scott Lang is very quick on his feet for figuring stuff out, you know, yeah, for, yeah. for breaking into places. So um, Paul so Rudd it, doing parkour in the beginning of the movie was pretty cool, man. Right. Hmm. Right. So it's, climbing up that wall, Jackie Chan style. That's pretty neat. Yeah. So I think that you're right. They're setting up part of what eight man's doing is setting up uh, Scott Lang partnered with Hank Pym to kind of be a, a counter to. Tony Stark being on the other side in Civil War. Yeah. Oh, good Lord. I just had a horrible thought. What if they have Michael Douglas going to Jan uh, Giant Man like Henry Pym did when Scott Lang took over as Ant Man? Uh, well, no, I don't think they're going to go there. Can you imagine we... that? That that would be that would be a horrible fall because, you know, he's on up I, in the years. I, 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 I was trying to avoid this, but here's my prediction. Mm -hmm. um, I think the direction that they're going is... Uh, this is based on what we saw in Ant-Man. This is my guesses for Civil War. Um, Ant-Man will now become Giant Man and as and be a powerhouse uh, on the non-reg side, and then uh, to counter Hulk, the Hulk, you think? Right, and Hulk, well, we'll don't we'll, we'll see what happens with the Hulk. He's still a question mark of whether or not he's in the movie. Um, and then Hope Van Dyke will be the Wasp because the const the the, the thought is. You can have one guy who grows and one person who shrinks, as opposed to having two people who shrink. You right. know, and then I think this is just a total guess um, because they haven't talked about uh, Chris Evans' future after uh, too much after um, Captain America three. They might kill him off, and we'll have uh, Bucky take over as Captain America like he did in the comics. Well, that would be interesting, but you know. Um... 
I'll, I'll tell you another interesting twist they may take with it, and I've been discussing this a lot lately and having fun with it. What if they do an East Coast, West Coast Avengers split? Yeah, it's always a possibility, too. I mean, they're, they're definitely, they're definitely, like, they're, they're doing a good job of not keeping everything in uh, in uh, New York. Uh, with that would be the perfect split for the Avengers movies to go into East Coast and West Coast for the franchise to expand. Um, because, you know, if they have Civil War, they're not going to kill those characters off. You know they're not. They're going to butt heads, but they're not going to go, you know, terminus and blow everything up and just be rubble. Um, they're going to have to split them apart for a while and mm-hmm. make them interact loosely. And I think they're going to, they're going to use that as a, as a franchise point of forking them off into, um, other realms to get different characters to come in. It's not a bad idea. We'll see. It'll be interesting. So, I mean, this is pure speculation. Right, right. Yes. So, yes, we don't know anything. We're, we're, we're wild speculation here, people. But uh, as far, as far as Ant-Man goes, uh, back to the movie with the, with the, with the, family dynamic what did you guys think of the family back line, uh, uh storyline for scott lang i think it was much better than sandman's <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah i mean because oh. let's put it to this way it was on more solid footing uh, let me put it that way oh was oh, the pun intended man. um man <laughs> yeah because that, for what they attempted in spider-man 3 that's okay they brought him back in the new fantastic four oops <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm not the only one, did. <laughs> so anyway, yes, as as they attempted in Spider-Man Three, where they had they gave Sandman a daughter, um, and made her his motivation, but yet he was still a bad guy. Um, they gave you have Scott Lang's daughter, who's his motivation to be a good guy. Um, but so I think Which that returns to being a bad guy so that he can survive. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, Baskin Robbins, that was beautiful, man. Oh my god. That was perfect. Baskin Robbins always fall, finds out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was that was good. Oh man, um, <laughs> yeah. But no, it was it was a good dynamic. It worked. Um, the 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 stepdad kind of uh, you know it was it, it was interesting. It hit home a little bit. Um, you know, being a stepdad myself, it's just like uh, um, yep. Yeah, I, I, I would I would try not to be a jerk. <laughs> You know, I mean, but the guy was a criminal, quote unquote. I started to say it was a co- it was a cop it was a cop crook type of dynamic too. Right, though, right, right. Not, that not, made it worse. Right, right. But uh, but they made up for it in the end. They're buddy buddy now, maybe. And even Paul, perfect Paul Rudd humor. They make a joke at it and, and stab at it and say awkward, and then they move to focus on the kid. Yes. So you know, it, it was perfect. It rounded out very very well. Um, it also gave Hank Pym redemption for missing out on Hope's storyline, you know, there for a while, that triangle between them. Um, it also gave right. him redemption with Ant-Man, and then it gave him redemption in the end with uh, laying Janet to rest with the the extra surprise trailer, which the end of the movie was freaking phenomenal when they opened that vault. I, I wondered what was back there the whole movie because he passed it and said, stay out of there, and it mm-hmm. said, keep out on the door. <laughs> and this is in his house. Yeah. <laughs> but this room has a keep out banner across the door if you re- if you guys saw that. Yes. And, uh, it, you know, when he finally pops it open and shows Hope what it was, oh, man, that just changed the whole Marvel Universe right. and the, the films altogether right there. Right. It was interesting that, um, you know, and again, it goes back to my theory of obviously her being the wasp going forward. Um, but what I, what I found interesting and, and, and follow along with me here, boys, and we see if you, if you, uh, agree with this or not. Um, they, he, uh, Hank says, Oh, well, if you go subatomic, time and rel, you know, relativity have no meaning, you know, and, um, Oh, she's still around because it's most like it's, it's right. like is Janet, suspended animation. Right, right, right. Is is Janet still alive and suspended animation somewhere? And is it possible for her to come back? Well, well guess awesome. where guess where they're going to detail that? I can tell you exactly where they're going to do it. The and Micronauts mention, movie? No, unfortunately not. Um, I, I'm hoping to. I, I, I'm keeping my thumb ups for that one. I, I'm, I'm in there emailing the directors and, and the producers every day saying, please. <laughs> but... Um, you know, because this would be a great film just for the effects alone. Um, if anybody's listening to see how bad we're bashing on Marvel Disney right now, just jump on, guys. We're we're fans. Uh oh. Three, two, one. Um, they are basing hey. that film as a subatom the science and the magic, the alchemy's crossing to where he goes uh, subatomic as well. 
We're you guys laughing. were laughing at me because I faded out, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> I do it. Oh, Every time you show, say something really the whole, cool. <laughs> the whole show, man. Uh, okay. Well, what I was saying was uh, they're, they're playing Stephen Strange as an alchemist. Yes. So there's a lot more science to the magic that he does. So mm. uh, he does mention going subatomic in uh, – mentions of that every time someone mentions him it's it's due to subatomic base or interdimensional things um you know in the outtakes reel of the avengers they even mention it you know there's one of the characters i don't remember which one goes wow i wish Stephen strange was here you know because they're dealing with trying to close the portal in new york in the avengers uh, movie. actually that okay see so there you go if he's dealing with alchemy they've established that thin particles is is a is a is a chemical of some kind um mm and an alchemist and instead of having a another dimension like going through a gate and going into hell or or whatever you're going to a subatomic world which would be like a whole nother world and, that, and that's the whole reason he astro projects he he's always done that he when he ever watched Stephen strange um astro projects he always goes into other dimensions right right you know he goes into spiritual realms or whatever materialistic uh, realm he needs at the time to fight over whatever story he's doing, uh, you know, wherever the guys from the old bullpen, you know, decided to uh, <laughs> let's have let's have some vodka and see where he goes this week, you right. know. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's actually yeah, it, it's an, it's a scientific way to tie it all together. Cool, because you got to remember before Stephen Strange was, I mean, even in his original storyline, before he was an alchemist he was a scientist. Right, right, right. And he was a psychiatrist. So, you know, he was studying uh, the paranormal and astral projection and things like that on a scientific level. And then he crossed over into alchemy when he got possessed. So, mm -hmm. you know, that that's where it all comes together. So I'm thinking they're going to tie it in on that because of the dark level that they're going in with the movie, which right. if there is a comic God listening at this point out <laughs> on the radio waves, please, please, dear Lord, listen to me. And make a dark horse style, and I mean dark horse by gritty, dark, nasty underworld movie of Stephen Strange crossing over with Ghost Rider instead of Nick Cage. Sorry, love Nick Cage movies, but we need to reboot that one. Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, speaking of uh, Doctor Strange, um, it was just revealed today that it's been confirmed um, Daredevil will make an appearance in the, in the Doctor Strange movie. <clears throat> yes, he will. Which is interesting because, and then are bringing Punisher into <coughs> Daredevil next season. So we're going to have, you know, there, so there you go. Maybe we're going to have some nice, dirty, gritty crossover stuff for you. Well, the Marvel Knights were a huge dig, man. I love those books. Yes. I, I really did. I was a huge fan of the Marvel Knight stuff. When they went dark, um, the Punisher and the Wolverine run were my favorite. Black Widow was a close second. And then I really loved the Doctor Strange stuff in that series. But, um, you know, then they crossed it over to Max, and then it went really um, <laughs> off the cuff. A little bit. Just a little. So. Um, yeah, well, the Marvel Knight stuff was uh, um, Joe Cusada and uh, I think Kevin Smith was involved with it. And Pat some Lee other was people. In it. Yeah. It, it's right before. It's when Marvel was uh, going bankrupt, and they were trying to figure out a, something to do to save the, the company. And they. It was you know, when they invested in Sony and gave up Spider Man. Oops. Well, right, but but you know, so they went to they went to some young artists and writers and said, "Here are some properties that are just aren't doing well. Do whatever you want with them, and 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 uh, and try to uh, try to make something of it. And see what heck, what you can do." And that's where Marvel Knights came from. And then, you right. know, one thing right. led well, to another, and Kusada ended up as uh, editor in chief, and now he's chief creative officer. But you know, it's uh, yeah, I mean, it was some good stuff when they started, anyway. And the funny thing is, is I'm hoping that they keep leading in the direction of the series on Netflix to go towards Casada's style of Guardian Devil. Yeah, yeah. They keep seeming they they they're seeming to lean on that theme, and if they use that as source material and run their original path, I think they're going to kick it, man. Yeah, no, I mean, it it has that feel to it. It has the yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't see. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's funny because a lot of people were comparing it to um, what's his name. Um, 
Dark Knight Returns. Uh, uh, Frank uh, Miller uh, stuff. Frank, yeah. They were comparing it to the Frank Miller stuff, and it's like, right. eh, Frank Miller's the first one who went real dark with Daredevil and, and brought in the Catholic elements, but there's more I'm sorry, the movie, the Ben Affleck movie was actually closer to the, ben Miller, to the Frank Miller stuff than uh, the Ben Miller? Okay, that's interesting. The Frank, <laughs> the Frank Miller run. <clears throat> Yes, yes. You know, it had that more of a, that gritty feel to it, that street urban feel. Um, I, I think the series is going a totally different direction. And, you know, with um, back to the Ant-Man movie, you know, in relation, I think if they go that type of feel to it, um, if they go with a, a Waringo style, you know, a cartoony, light, um, comedic edge, like they walk that fine line with this new movie. Mm-hmm. If they do that with this, with the Ant Man franchise in the modern universe, I think they're going to be all right. I, I really do. I think they're going to have a, a home run every time they touch it. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, they, they have the Golden Touch right now. I don't know. I don't know when they're gonna when they're gonna you know falter and and fall. Um, they keep Midas's hand in a gla- in a glass <laughs> box in a big safe in the back. They, and, I mean, they definitely there, he's there banging his nub trying to get it out. You know, I mean, one of the things that they, they've they've stuck to um, is trying to have a theme around each movie and stick to that as opposed to, let's write a super, another superhero movie. Let's write another superhero It's like, you know... Um, They're not throwing it at the wall and seeing what sticks and then right, right. T- like, tying it together after the fact. <laughs> Cap- Captain America First Avenger was a uh, a period piece. And then Captain America Winter Soldier was a, a spy thriller. And... Guardians of the Galaxy was a space opera, and Ant Man is a heist movie. Like, right? They just happen to be starring superheroes, you know. But they're going with core. Uh oh. So John, you're being quiet. They wanted to jump out. I, I fell off right here at the end of the show, man. Just tripped. Boom. But um, no. What I was going to say real quick was is that uh, they're they're running a, a a traditional deep story that everybody can relate to and everybody resonates to and then building the superhero genre around it. And I really enjoy that. And I think that's where you were going with it, Dave. Yes. yes. Uh, that's, you know, that's spot on. And as long as they keep doing that, I think they're going to have a lot better properties come out. Um, I still wish they would have CGI'd. Um, we're going to, you know, I'm going to go back to this tangent of the age of apocalypse thing coming out. <laughs> um, the dude just looks horrible. Um, yeah. You sure that was final cut? CGI yeah yeah that yeah, like... oh, yeah that's that's the movie poster man that's movie movie official movie clips from Disney they were released at San Diego Comic Con yeah it's, it's it, it looks really bad it's horrible um you know um they think they think they've got something original and they're saying that this is the new approach with it but if they would have gone CGI I think Fox censored them yes if they went CGI like Thanos <laughs> with the Hulk style animation they would have made a killing. Yes. All right. Um, <laughs> so, um, oh, and actually, speaking of the of the Golden Touch, I do. I wanted to bring this up before we wrap it up. Um, so the the movie you guys are week... laughing at me, you jerks. I heard you over there. You're trying to <laughs> figure out if I'm going to fall off or not. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so the movie made 58 million <laughs> domestically, 114 worldwide. Not bad. Um, awesome. That's great. But. I mean, it was a hundred and thirty million dollar budget, so of course, because it wasn't a hundred million dollar opening weekend like some other movies, some critics are saying, "Oh, Marvel's failed," and it's like, really? Yeah, I mean, that see, that's one thing I don't get. Okay, so it didn't make its entire um, cost in the first weekend. These these this movie is going to last for a couple of weeks at least. It's going to move into the international scene after that, and then. What fanboy isn't going to go out and get the Platinum Edition Blu-ray as soon as it comes <laughs> out and put it right next to all the rest of the Marvel Marvel movies they've got? This, you know, and that's 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 granted that they don't first rent it on Netflix because they've got a you know they won't put the Blu-ray out until you've got at least two week window on Netflix or or Amazon Prime. They're going to make all of their money back, all of the money back, and then some. Right. They just, you know, well, you know, I, I've got, you know, a few words to say here to to squash that real quick. Guardians of the Galaxy. They yeah. made so much. They made so. <laughs> you know, I faded out, didn't I? No, 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 no. no, no. no. Good. Okay. Because because, um, you know, you guys are like, what's your point? No. <laughs> but uh, Guardi- you know, Guardians of the Galaxy made so much money 
just from the opening weekend alone, they could cover the next five Marvel movies and never have to worry about it. Right. Well, that's true, too. Um, so it's yeah. a package thing. People need to look at it as a wide scope because this <clears> isn't just something that's going to end, you know, begin and end with one movie. Yes, it's one in, it's one movie that says the budget, whether it's going to resonate into sequels for that character. But the thing is, is in the overall view of things, they're planning movies between now and the next, you know, 15 years. So if they get one that's low, the higher ones will max it out in budget, you know, so just relax with that. That's right, all right. I got to say there. Well, I mean, also... Again, fifty-eight million domestically. It was still the number one movie this weekend in the United States. So it just means a lot of people didn't go to the movies this weekend. Period. And because you know everyone was still recovering from the whole Jurassic World uh, uh, debacle. Juggernaut. Debacle. Well, I was going to say juggernaut. Um, <laughs> and I kind of think you know again, Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, the previews made it look really fun too. The Ant Man, I like the Ant Man preview. I thought it made it look fun, but I wonder if people were a little hesitant. You know, Paul Rudd now starring in a movie, and 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 it's Ant Man. He shrinks. Blah blah blah. They were um, screaming it was going to be not another nightmare like Daredevil. Of course, Michael. Clark, I've said this before. Michael Clark Duncan and Ben Affleck both said that that you know that was not the movie they made. Yeah. Right. Right. The final edit did not come out the same way, and you know they tried to make it dark and gritty and screwed it up. Right. So, but, so uh, word of mouth will carry it the next. Exactly. Couple of I think. Yeah. I think I'm going to make a prediction. I could be way off with this. Um, we'll we'll, we'll check back later, but I think uh, you're going to see next weekend. It will hit that hundred million for the weekend. I think people are going to be like, oh my! Everyone's going to be like, who's seen it? Oh my God! It's a wonderful movie. Go see it. And now everyone's like, "Okay, fine. It's Marvel. Let's go see it." You know. Well, yeah, and it's it, going to do the same thing that the Punisher movie did. You know, the Thomas Jane movie. Everybody saw him as you know a soft. They said it was more of a soft Punisher. Right. right. And they were screaming how bad that movie was going to be. And then it, you know, it opened really, really low, and it was a low budget film anyway because it didn't right. require the effects. It was just an action movie, you know. Uh, but the story was great. And you know, everybody was saying, well, John Travolta's play, you know, playing in it as the villain, so this is going to be awful. And I was just like, no, I'm going to give it a shot. And I love it. It's still one of my favorite Marvel movies. Yes. Hmm. All right. And the so, second weekend, it got triple the money. So yes. Yeah, I think I, I definitely think I think it's just going to keep going. I think next weekend is going to be bigger, and it'll go up and up. I don't think it's going to just die at 58 million. I think it was just you know a lot of people didn't go out this weekend for some reason, and I think. There was, you know, as word of mouth hits, like John said, it's going to be like, oh, let's all run and go see it now. So yeah, I'm glad I that I saw. And you know what? It's funny they say this, but yet the theater I was in was crowded, you know. I went to a uh, premiere and we had to squeeze in. Right, right. I'm sure there were people in the theater when you saw it, John. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't packed. But like I said, I, I saw the first showing on a Saturday morning. Uh, so so. matinee type time. Yeah, because I, you know, you, oh, know, right. me, you I get texted up at like me. five. <laughs> you texted me when you were in the theater. It was pretty early on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and it was it was crap. There was a line at the door when I came out of the movie theater. So when when I came out of the the actual theater, it was playing in. So yes, um, so yes, that's. I think we'll, you know it's it's going to be fine. It's there will be an Ant Man too. You know. Uh, all the haters can suck it. So, okay. Um, as we <clears throat> do with these episodes, when we, when we review a movie, uh, we give it a rating, one out of ten capes. Um, and final thoughts. So we'll start with you, Brad. Uh, what's your rating and, and what's your final thoughts on the movie? Uh, ten negative. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I give it about, I, I would give it a nine. Uh, it, it's solid. I enjoyed it. It's exactly what I expected from classic Ant-Man. Um, they took a brand new, fresh approach with it. And it's a great film. Go check it out. Cool. John? See, my um, my scale's a little bit more screwed up. I was... <laughs> see, I, I, give it, I give it a... See, I'm thinking I'm giving it a 7. But then my scale goes from, like... Um, let's see... From, his seven from, is from original his seven 19, is ten. <laughs> my, my 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 one is like like Nicolas Cage is Superman, <laughs> and my oh. my ten is Guardians of the Galaxy. So Tom Cruise is Iron Man. <laughs> oh God, no! 
No, no, I, I'm referring back to the original, you know, I, I forget who the director, one of the famous directors, there were, Nicolas Cage was going to be Superman, there was yes, going to be yes, a yes. giant spider involved. And all yes, yes. and that movie turned into the Wild Wild West with Will Smith, yes. Oh, God, that's right, yes. It so was anyway, Burton, by the way. Tim Burton. Right. Yes. So that that's my, that's my one, my 10 is Guardians of the Galaxy, and I think this was a solid 7, which... For for my scale is good because you know the Avenger the Avengers movies are eights and nines so it's right it's right along it, you, definitely you should go see it it's not gonna blow your socks completely off but damn it it is enti- it is entertaining and it is fun and it is fitting in with the rest of the universe uh okay so I will give it hmm I'm gonna give it an eight um a little higher than John. A little lower than than Brad. Um, Just right. It, it was yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, I, I'm I'm the baby bear. Look, um, I think in all honesty, like it was refreshing in my mind to see a superhero movie on a on a smaller scale, pun intended. Um, right, right. That oh, that oh. that uh, you know, it was it was a fun heist movie that uh, um, a, a lot of comedy. Again, it's the Marvel Golden Touch. Um, and yeah, it's, um, was it the best of the Marvel movies? No. Was it in the top five? Yeah, I think it was. So with that, again, like these two said, go see it. It's a great movie and uh, you won't be disappointed. Trust us. Just to add on, you know, for everybody that thinks that, uh, he, that Hitman is a underrated secondary character. Let me tell you, this this one brings it into where the Marvel Universe has a great story for content, and it's one of those where you get a lot more information about the Marvel Universe. So step in. Well, yes. I mean, yeah, to back that up, everyone said Iron Man was a second-rate uh, character. Oh, God, yeah. Everyone said Guardians of the Galaxy? <laughs> so, yes, he's one of the original Avengers. Yes, it just, just go see it. Yep. So, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, as we say each and every week, because we're nuts. <laughs> Don't let your kids up our medication. <laughs> Have a good week. Okay, now it's my turn. <laughs> okay, what are you doing? Uh, taking over Dad's mic so I can be part of superhero speak. Duh. Well, there are better ways to join the conversation. Really? Like what? Well, you can interact with them on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and even Pinterest. Wait, people use Pinterest? And what's Google+, Plus? I don't know, something to do with circles. Anyway, you can also see all their posts, including comic book videos, on their website, where you can also sign up for their mailing list. Cool! Yep, are you still going to try to hijack Dad's mic? Nope, I'm going to try to answer the stump the key question. Nice. So who do you think would win in a fight between Rainbow Dash and Squirrel Girl? Oh, that's a hard one. Oh no, Dad's waking up. Run for your lives! Oh, what are you guys doing? That cape's going to get called to the door. Ow, 